Welcome back. It's the Fully Live Athlete Pastor Channel. This is Justin speaking. Uh, welcome. We are going to be looking at uh, the Online Bible Reading Club Day 113. Today we're dealing with 2 Samuel chapter 16, 17, and 18, and then in the Gospel of Luke chapter 17, just verses 20 through 37. All right, so uh, we hope that uh, in your viewing of this and this whole series that you're able to, to uh, apprehend and, and take hold of timeless truths while possibly just passing the time on YouTube. We hope that this series will be a resource as we go through the whole Bible. And the plan we're using below uh, is listed. Uh, it has a, just, a, as we said earlier, a bit of the Old Testament, a bit of the New uh, as we go you know, verse by verse through it. So in 2 Samuel, let me uh, set you up with actually what's happening in Luke. It goes together. Now, the Luke passage is a, is a few words that Jesus uh, has, or Luke has brought together from Jesus about the, the coming of the kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God is this. Now, heaven is invading earth, right, in Christ. And he's uh, calling people out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. By his wonderful grace and where God is there is freedom there is no sin there is life there is light and so what's going on is the kingdom of God being in your midst is the manifestation of Christ and his wonderful work uh, to heal his people and the world and to overcome sin and the world and the devil now, that's the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God's here. Now, he wants to make sure that you know in Luke 17, the last part of Luke 17, that it's not going to be like you think it is. You know, it's, uh, people will tell you there it is, and, and it's not, it's not going to be that. Uh, you're going to suffer for this kingdom, actually. Uh, it's not going to come with power. You're not going to think, well, the kingdom of God's here, so I'm safe. Well, no, we're not safe. It's going to call us to suffer along with Christ. Uh, you're also going to see there that it's going to be sudden, so there's going to be suffering involved. It's also going to be sudden. As you see, he mentions Noah in verse 26, uh, how suddenly they're eating and drinking and, and being given in marriage, and then, bam, the flood comes and destroys them all. Uh, so suddenness of it, uh, you see that. Uh, that also was the case of the next example with Sodom. Uh, people were eating, drinking, buying, selling, planning, building, and then the, the sulfur rained down from heaven uh, and destroyed them all. So he says it's going to be just like that when the day the Son of Man is revealed. And he talks about uh, being left behind. And so you might think about the Left Behind series. You know, Kirk Cameron did some movies uh, about the Left Behind series, books by Tim LaHaye and uh, Mr. Jenkins. Well, uh, they, they always talk about how it's not good to be left behind in the books because there's a lot of suffering involved there. Uh, but here it is that the, the, the guys that God's chosen are left behind whereas those who are not chosen are taken uh, to judgment. That's the, that's the thing that we're saved from by the kingdom of God, is that God comes to dwell with his people, and he removes all opposition to his complete and utter domination, his kingdom, his rule, his reign, uh, will be established uh, when Christ, uh, who has ascended into heaven, uh, descends and dwells with his people again. There will be no temple, there will be... Uh, flowing uh, waters from him and refreshing. Uh, he will dwell in the midst of his people and he uh, forevermore will bless his people and we will have a sin-free, perfect and glorified uh, place with him forevermore. Okay, so that's the, that's the coming kingdom. But the goal, the, the goal here as you're reading this is to think about the suddenness of it all. You're going to think about how it's uh, going to involve suffering here and now, and it is present, a present reality. As Christ reigns in his people's hearts, he will manifest that fully throughout the world, ultimately when he returns. But right now he's reigning in the hearts of the people. So that's Luke 17. With that said, uh, the kingdom is good news, and it's to be embraced by all people, all, where, all everywhere. We preach the kingdom of God in our church and send people out to preach the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God. Uh, and so we call people to faith and to repentance, to, to bring all of life in conformity to the kingdom of God. As it is in heaven, so it should be on this earth, right? That's what we pray in the Lord's Prayer. Well, 
Now let's go back to the Old Testament and quickly summarize this. This is the kind of the conclusion of the Absalom story. Now, David is the main character of the Samuel books, right? So we're in the midst of 2 Samuel, getting towards the end here. And David has committed his great sin with Bathsheba. His family is a wreck. Uh, one of his sons by one wife has raped uh, the uh, sister from another wife. And that sister's brother, Absalom, has killed the brother, uh, uh, who the stepbrother, who uh, has, has raped his sister. Uh, after a year of, of plotting that, he eventually kills him. And then he's been exiled. We talked last time about how David didn't have really the gumption to bring about full justice or full grace. And so Absalom, you see, is in this kind of uh, purgatory uh, where he doesn't have a relationship with his father, but he doesn't have judgment either. So he's been brought back to Jerusalem. Uh, but And he's become a real problem and a thorn in the side of David because he's kind of, he's, he's orchestrated a coup. And so David has been exiled. And now we see uh, uh, Mephibosheth's servant has uh, misled David about Mephibosheth. That's a funny little detail there. We'll get to later on in the story. Uh, but you've got this guy cursing David, and David has, uh, you know, been humiliated by his son Absalom. And now Absalom has captured Jerusalem, and in doing so, he's done some really nasty stuff. He is that he's David's son, but he is not after his own heart. He has done uh, being a king, as a, a replacement king, and a functional king in the way the nations do. And he gets bad advice. He, the, nation, uh, the, the advice he gets is that he needs to take the remaining concubines of David, the women of the palace, and he sets up a tent on top of David's house and he uh, has sex with them you know, in order to demonstrate he's the, he's the man now. Uh, it's just a horrific, horrible uh, way to uh, to to just take advantage of these women and to to reign over people and treat them as as basically resources and uh, and badges for him uh, and it, it's it's ugly and that's that's the way the the, the world does powers they subjugate people uh, but uh, the the true king Jesus gives life right so G David when he's at his best is doing that but David is exiled so what's going to happen so David is left uh, Hushai who is his who is his servant he has an inside man there so Hushai if you look at 17 chapter 17 he gives uh, second Samuel he gives a lot of bad advice to uh, Absalom which is ultimately going to lead to Absalom's demise and you see in this next chapter 18 uh, that uh, Absalom uh, has pursued David. He's got intel where David is. David's across the Jordan River to the east, and they have a forest battle. And David has it all set up where he's got people working for him and spies. And David completely, his army completely demolishes uh, the uh, Absalom's army. Right. So uh, the coup has been thwarted. Now the story uh, zooms in in chapter 18 on. Absalom himself, who was riding his uh, his mule there, and he uh, is. It says earlier in chapter 14, which we read last time, that Absalom was this good-looking man. He really took uh, pride in his hair, and here he is riding through the forest, and his hair gets caught in a tree uh, from a branch to coming down or something. He gets stuck in a tree. He cannot get down, and his animal leaves him, and he's hanging by his hair. How humiliating, right? Well, it just so happens in God's providence that one of David's three commanding officers who, care, who, who you know, uh, takes charge of a thousand men, uh, Joab, finds him. And David has instructed all of his captains to go gentle on Absalom, right? Well, Joab shows no mercy. He takes his, his stick and he slams him three times to knock him down, you know, and probably took out some of his hair in the process, right? So he cuts him down from the tree, and the men there take turns uh, spearing him and killing him so that he is dead, uh, and then he is buried in the forest there, and they throw they, they heap rocks and stones on top of it to make a memorial. And they see that done in, also in Joshua 7 and 8 with Ai and also uh, with, with Achan's sin. And also with another king in, in chapter 8 there that's a rival king in the Canaanites' land. So you see that that's a, uh, a huge sign of God's judgment 
on these false kings. And it's important for us to realize that's the end that we all will, will get. We'll get rocks heaped down on us, just like Sodom received, just like the, the flood waters received. And we, as Jesus talks about in Luke uh, chapter 17, we just read, as you look at the judgment of God upon them. Uh, well, here's the deal, guys. Uh, once Joab has killed Absalom, what's he do? He sends messengers to deliver the news of victory. The forces of Absalom have been routed. Absalom has been uh, destroyed, hung in a tree, and the curse has been placed on him. And that's the news that we receive uh, as Jesus comes to bring that news in Luke 17. He's bringing the news of the kingdom, right? But here's the, here's the twist. The major plot twist is that he actually is the one who becomes cursed. He hangs on a tree, right? And as Deuteronomy tells us, cursed is him who hangs on a tree. Jesus hangs on a cross and bears the curse of Absalom, right? He bears the justice of God upon our sin for us. And that is the good news of victory that we proclaim. We send messengers telling the victory of Jesus upon the cross in weakness because what? He didn't just stay dead in the tomb. He was killed for our sins, right? He, took, he bore the wrath of God for our sins. But he rose on the third day for our justification, and we proclaim the message of victory by our Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's what we send. And you see David there and his men, they're looking for the watchmen, the watchmen on the walls, they're waiting for the messengers who delivered the news of victory. And we, in the same way, are looking for news. And we, and people are all looking for news and security, and we send messengers, we send missionaries and pastors and college students to dorms and, 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 and people to the workplace. And we, we send people everywhere from the church to every square inch of God's creation in order to be messengers of the victory of Jesus Christ. So we, uh, we, we sing and bring the trumpet blast and the song of a cursed king, a suffering king, who, a man of sorrows who gave his life as a ransom for many and you can be delivered from this day of the kingdom coming through the son jesus christ through faith in him alone that's the good news so i hope that's helpful for you guys timeless truths uh, and on a, on a platform that's mainly for wasting time on youtube but i hope that this is helpful if it is keep watching keep tuning in hit the subscribe button hit the like and comment tell me what you're learning and we'd love to uh, interact with that god bless we'll see you next time